All right, guys, today we are going to be taking a look at one of the most requested bushcrafting and field knives on the channel. I, of course, do appreciate the requests as per usual. I try to get around to getting these knives and acquiring them. It's not always the easiest. Sometimes I'm finding them, sometimes I'm getting enough money to get them. Um, but this is the Topps Bracamo, and this one is going to make for a very interesting knife, I think, in the overall testing process. Now, I've once again been requested to test and run the Bracamo through my standardized tests for quite some time by many people and this is one that does often come up in the comment section below um, where people are like hey have you used this do you have experience with it what do you think of it and ultimately i've had my reservations about the bracamo because i've handled them i haven't necessarily used them before um, but i've handled them before and they were never quite my fancy and it's really it honestly has to do with this knife right here and this of course is the tops field craft for those who don't know this is my personal one i guess both of these are now technically my personal knives, but um, well used, well loved, unlike the Bracamo just now. But the primary reason why I liked the Fieldcraft over the Bracamo was that the Fieldcraft has, essentially these guys are about the same overall length, but the Bracamo has a slightly shorter handle. So you guys can probably tell here, slightly shorter handle, but also a slightly shorter blade, or sorry, I should say, the Bracamo is a slightly shorter handle, slightly longer blade, whereas it's vice versa with the Fieldcraft, slightly longer handle, but slightly shorter blade. So the Fieldcraft is technically a little bit shorter in overall length than the Bracamo, but essentially the concept is that the uh, Fieldcraft has a longer handle, shorter blade, and the Bracamo has a longer blade, shorter handle. And so what this leads to with the Bracamo is a like more forward center um, weighting that I was never huge fan of. In addition to this too, um, the handle material, like the thickness of the handles is much thinner on the Bracamo, but it's also wider. So that's the, another huge difference between these two is that the, the physical width of these two blades is noticeable. And one thing that is worth noting is of course, with that slightly wider blade, you do also get a wider cutting geometry. So it definitely helps the Scandinavian grind, of course, because the Scandinavian grind literally is just a grind until the terminus of the edge. When you have a longer Scandinavian grind, this gives you a little bit of a cutting advantage. Now, one of the other advantages to the Bracamo itself is that it doesn't really have a coating. So typically most Topps knives have a um, truck bed liner coating, whether it's black or whether it's tan, the classic one is black. Um, but overall, it, it's not the best thing because it does get in the way of striking ferro rods. Whereas if you just have a plain bare 1095, you have no coating to get in the way. In addition to this too, the other big advantage to the Bracamo is that it has no jimping. So this is something that I do really like and do actually have a personal preference over because the, the jimping isn't necessarily the end of the world in the Fieldcraft, but when the Fieldcraft was made by the Brothers of Bushcraft, um, which also included Joe Flowers at the time, um, Tops had more input and they physically said that we have to have jimping on this knife. So Tops wouldn't allow the design without jimping, though nowadays they have since learned and worked with more designers. And so luckily on a lot of their more modern designs, they negate jimping because jimping is arbitrary. So anyways, this is the Tops Bracamo. I don't have a whole, whole lot to say about this guy because uh, it is reasonably new, but I am going to be running this guy through its paces. But I really want to kind of like break down what some of my hesitancy and reservation as to why I haven't gotten one. I'm not blind to the knowledge of the Bracamo, but it's just consistently been one of those knives, that especially when you look at it, like for me personally, I'm just not a huge fan of the shorter handle. And also lastly, I'm not a huge fan of the huge, like humongous freaking um, lanyard hole here, which once again, it does help probably with the weighting. And it certainly does add to the kind of weird aesthetic of this knife in typical Joe Flowers fashion. You know, all of his designs have to have a little bit of oddity to them, like the classical Shango notch of the Fieldcraft, which was something that Joe Flowers luckily negated on the Bracamo because the Shango notch is very cool, but the Shango notch quickly 
grew to not be very popular or very useful because while I do like the application of it, when you are bringing down the, the Shango notch onto, you know, a ferro rod, it really, really digs into and can break um, ferro rods because ferro rods are made of ferrocerium. It is a very brittle um, alloy. So when you are driving down a knife onto a um, very brittle steel or metal um, ferrocerium rod, it is definitely potential to shatter. So the Shango notch is something that is luckily no longer present on the Bracamo. And I think that the Bracamo takes a lot of what the field crafts learning lessons were for Joe Flowers and kind of modifies it, gives it a better overall blade. So you have a nice wide blade with a nice wide, um, I believe this is a convex, yeah, it's a convex Scandinavian grind. And then of course you have that shorter handle with no Shango notch. So I like that. Things that I still am not fully sold on is of course the continual placement of the bow drill divot socket on these. For me, I don't like it for two reasons. One, if you really get after and use these bow drill divot sockets, you will burn through your micarta. Micarta is not really designed to be used in high friction environments like a bow drill divot so it will burn through these and you can definitely cause some damage to your handle um, so that is something I'm not a huge fan of and then also too I just really don't love having the idea of you know like you sheath your knife right um, and then you're just holding a sheath knife like this and you're trying to you know, make this work or you're holding it like this and you're trying to make this work it's just is very not ergonomic and not very pleasing to use or do one thing I am happy to say that they did keep or retain very similar to the original Fieldcraft was the Kydex sheath. Now, of course, there's some differentials here. I have taken off my kind of twirly belt loop thing um, off of the Fieldcraft because I use this in a different application that I've gone over in different videos. So I actually don't want that clip on there, but it still is functionally the same kind of taco styled um, Kydex where they just, you know, um, fold it over at the top and bring it together. So one thing that is, I will say, um, a little bit of a differential is that the original, and this is an old school Topps Fieldcraft, so I think they actually make them all like this nowadays. But something that I do kind of miss is the um, screws that they used to use to hold these guys together, because if you use screws to hold the sheath together, you can, of course, take those screws apart and then use it to mount things to, you can use that, you can use that to mount um, different things like ferro rod holders on there. So in my opinion, a little bit of a missed opportunity, but not a huge deal. So anyways, guys, that has been a look at the Topps Bracamo for now. I think it is worth going over and kind of talking about now because of course, like I said, I do have plans to test and feature this knife more uh, extensively. So I think it is a pretty cool blade overall and it should be fun nonetheless to test and play around with. So anyways, guys, that is the Topps Bracamo. It is one of, like I said, the most requested knives. So I figured since I'm getting back into survival and bushcrafting knives, it's worth taking a look at, worth going over, and uh, yeah, just overall worth breaking down. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless.